Hey, welcome back to Max and A Forcemanship and Baby Steps. And uh, if I'm squinting a little today, it's because uh, it's pretty sunny, but there's still a little snow on the ground. And while well, if you're looking around, you notice there's a lot more snow than there was in the last video. Well, it's because, well, a couple of days ago, we had a little bit of a blizzard. And it lasted a couple of days. Never got super cold, but the winds were nasty and the uh, driving conditions were terrible. But... Uh, I, f I suspect with the temperatures going back up again and the sun shining that uh, in a couple of days all this snow you see is going to be gone. It's not going to last long. It was pretty much gone before this, but unfortunately we get these things. And uh, I, I've seen this happen before, but it, you know, it's not common. And, but, I mean, anything can happen. You never know. I've seen spring vary for, you know, by a couple of months. I mean, I've seen snow as late as May, and, uh, well, I've also seen brown grass, well, green grass, actually, in April, so, or March, or, well, what, anyhow, it doesn't matter. Uh, <clears throat> I'm going to go get the little one I've been working with, and I'm not going to bother showing you any of that stuff, because I, I don't think we're going to do anything new today. We're just going to repeat a whole bunch of the stuff that we've been doing. Uh, over and over because that's you know that's what the training's all about is just doing the same stuff over and over uh, it's not rocket science it's actually pretty simple if you take the right approach and just go slow and take your time and just do things you know just because something gets seems pretty good doesn't mean you can't do it some more you know I don't care how many times you do it you can never do stuff too much and you can never go too slow I've said this before in my other videos you can never go too slow you can only go too fast just remember that. You can only go too fast. You can never go too slow. Take your time. Be patient. You know, that, uh, I mean, at the age of these horses that I'm working with right now, uh, they're not going to be ridden for quite a while yet. So there's, there's absolutely no reason whatsoever to get in a hurry. And, uh, but what I am going to show you uh, later on in this video is uh, not the one I've been working with, but the new one that you just saw in the last video. Uh, I'm going to bring her in again and work with her a bit and uh, see what transpires there. I got a feeling that could be interesting. Uh, the last session with her was really interesting. I was actually surprised by the progress we made and how fixing one thing led to a bunch of others. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later on too uh, because uh, there was something that happened in the last video that was very important actually. I didn't mention it and uh, only my more astute viewers would have even noticed what actually happened there. But uh, I'm going to explain it and how it works because it's a really important concept in horsemanship in general, uh, no matter what you're asking your horse to do. There's a couple of, of notions that are very important that you need to have down solid to make everything else work. And I'm going to explain those to you. But it's a topic I tend to try and avoid as much as possible because it's something that a lot of people really don't like. Well, just because they've seen so many bad examples of this thing that uh, people refer to as by what I'm going to talk about, but uh, what they show you as an example of that is not good. And if that's all I ever saw or understood, believe me, I'd want nothing to do with it either, but I'll get to that. So uh, hang on. Glad you could be with me, though. Don't go away. Uh, there's lots more coming. Uh, like I said, I'm going to go catch that one I've been working with. I'm going to do a bunch of stuff with her that we've done before. I'm just going to ask her to move side up to me, uh, maybe take her for a walk around the yard a little bit, stuff like that. Uh, and then I'm going to go get that other little bay and uh, take her in the round pan because uh, I think there might be something interesting to show you. I don't know for sure how that's going to go, but. Uh, based on our last session, uh, pretty interesting, and if nothing else, uh, that will be a good opportunity to explain what I'm talking about here. That uh, right now you're probably in the dark thinking, What the hell is he talking about? Doesn't make any sense. He's babbling. Don't worry, I'll, I'll explain it all. Just, just give me a minute, okay? And uh, I'm going to go play with that, that little paint, and uh, I'll get back to you with that bay, and I'll explain what. Uh, I didn't mention in the last video. 
pretty important stuff. Hang on. Hopefully this time I don't lose the file and hopefully I can actually show you what I wanted to try and show you the last time because well as you can see we're out in the pasture here and that little bay over there that's the one I want. I want to go catch that little bay out there and uh, sometimes she doesn't want to be caught but she's gotten a lot better and I want to show you how we did that. Hopefully she hasn't gotten too good because otherwise I won't be able to show you. But I'm going to show you exactly what I did. Uh, and the first time I did it, it actually took me about an hour. Which is a little longer than usual, but this exact same process can be done in a, a pasture, uh, a big arena, a round pan. You can do it anywhere you want. doesn't matter. You do it exactly the same. The only thing that changes is the length of time it takes. The bigger the area, the longer it takes. The smaller the area, the less time it takes. Simple as that. And well, I've, I've kind of shown you a little bit how it works in the round pen too with different things when I was asking the horse to move. The same principle can be used to a lot of things. Now I have with me my rope halter and my lead, same one I use on for everything. Got that with me. And because I always have that with me when I'm going out into the pasture, what we have is we have a tool, a rope. Now it's a little bit short, I'm going to lengthen it out before I get up to the horse. Because what I'm going to do, if uh, she doesn't cooperate, I'm going to send her off. I'm going to put pressure on, and as soon as she turns to me, I'm going to take the pressure off. Now she's already looking at me, and she knows what's coming. Yeah. This is what's coming and I'm going to walk right up to her and see what happens. She's moving. Okay, great. I'm going to put pressure on her. Now, this may get the other horses moving uh, if they're smart, which they appear to be today. Oh, she turns. She's looking at me. I'm just going to stop and back off. I'm going to wait a minute. Now, in a perfect world, the horse is actually going to come to you when you do this. It doesn't always work. And she's never been taught to come, so I'm going to walk up to her again. And uh, let's see, oh, she's turning her head away, she's moving away. Okay, fine, you want to move, you get to move. There you go. And we're just going to follow her around with pressure on her, keep her moving. If she doesn't want to stand still while I put the halter on, this is what we're going to do. Now, first time we did this, she was moving a whole lot more. All the other horses were moving with her. It was really quite difficult. Okay, she turned. She's looking at me. Uh, I stopped spinning the lead and take a step back. Now I'm going to wait a bit. Uh, like I said, in a perfect world, she'd come to me. Now I think she's considering this because you see her doing a little licking and chewing there. So now I'm going to walk up to her and see what happens. See if she's actually going to let me put the halter on this time. So we walk right up to her, and I think we're in luck. I'm just going to leave that rope over my arm, and we're going to put the halter on her. There we go. Simple as that. Now, this was a much abbreviated version, which is kind of convenient in a way. I didn't really want to do this for a whole hour, and I'm sure you didn't want to watch me walking around spinning lead for an hour. That, that wouldn't have been much fun. It would, certainly wouldn't be entertaining. But uh, this is exactly the process that we have done the last couple of times we had to catch this horse. And uh, it just went a whole lot quicker this time. And the other horses didn't get involved. They didn't think they needed to move. Uh, this big gelding here, this is her buddy. And uh, he would kind of run with her and take her away from me but uh, in time when I did it the first time both him and that other little filly over there uh, both figured out it wasn't about them and they didn't have to be running around it was only about her and towards the end she was the only one moving and that's kind of how you want it to go because horses are smart you know they, they figure it out and they, they know when it's about them and when it's not but uh, we just accomplished what we wanted uh, it was pretty quick today this went much quicker uh, sometimes it takes a little longer and uh, with this one it has like I said the first time I did this 
Uh, we were at it for about an hour. Uh, second time, uh, I don't know, 10 minutes? And this time, well, I'll bet you it wasn't five minutes. I don't know. I don't keep track of time when I'm doing this stuff. I just know that it's progressing. And uh, the other horses, you notice that one didn't even move. And these two are really buddies. And uh, she frequently uses him as something to hide behind. Whenever I'm after her, she'll go hide behind him. And, uh, but he figured out, yeah, it's not about him. He's just going to keep on grazing and forget about her. And, uh, if she keeps moving around, that's uh, her business, not his. So basically, uh, that is teaching a horse to be caught rather than catching a horse. Because the very first time I came out here, even though it took me an hour, uh, I could have actually caught her probably in maybe 10 or 15 minutes at the most. But if I didn't teach her to be caught, you'd always have to do it that way and it would always take 10 or 15 minutes whereas if you do it this way and she learns to get caught uh, then when you walk out here uh, well if things go well you just ask her to come to you and she'll come and then you put the halter on right now she's still at the stage where well she, nobody's ever taught her to come and she still thinks she needs to hide behind the other horse so it, it's still a work in progress but this is what you got to do and now she doesn't think she needs to listen to me so I'm just gonna give her a bump Every time her head goes down, there. Now she's got to pay attention to me. See how that works. <laughs> and, uh, well, the other thing she would not do well when we did catch her is she didn't lead where the darn, but she's learning to respect the halter. Uh, our last session worked worked out really well with her. And, uh, well, I'm going to turn the camera on when we get back to the routing pan and uh, let you see how that works out too because there's some things that uh, were really cool. And there's some stuff from the last session I want to talk about that took place that I never mentioned and you know, some of you might not have even realized it happened. But, uh, there's stuff happening always. Anyhow, uh, switch back to my other camera and uh, I'll join you back in the round pen in a minute. Bye. Hi okay, folks, uh, we're back in the round pen. And uh, we got the little bay with us here. And uh, I've got to talk a little bit about our last session now. Clearly I need to do some stuff all over again here today. I'm already seeing some things happening. That's okay. Uh, I'm, I'm getting it, betting it's gonna, not gonna take very long this time. And we're gonna have some dramatic changes in her because she went from brat to sweetheart uh, in about half an hour total. I don't know. And today when we were leading her over, uh, there's one area, once we get on the one side of the barn, all the other horses are out of sight and uh, she doesn't like being segregated and uh, last time I tried bringing her up here she'd take two steps stop take two steps stop take two steps stop well after our last session though <clears throat> uh, today when I brought her over uh, there's that one area there that we go through a couple hundred yards meters whatever I don't know I don't even know how long it is actually but uh, there's a stretch over there. Uh, I didn't have any problem at all leading her. She led beautifully. So I think some of the things that we did last session actually have spilled over into this one and are making things better today. Now, you notice I've actually got her attention today. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but she's standing there staring at me, waiting for me to tell her what to do. And uh, because, well, she doesn't have the other horses, so I'm the security blanket today because she doesn't have a big buddy to look after her. So let's see what happens here when we ask her to move. Well, this is interesting. Right from the beginning, she's better. And, uh, no, keep going, dear, I didn't ask you to stop. Thank you. And you'll notice she's doing much smaller circles. Uh, that's because she's not trying to avoid me. She's actually staying right with me. And I'm just going to back off a of hair. She's turning into me, facing directly towards me. Now, uh, in our video with the other little horse, uh, we were working out here in the round pen, and there's a pile of snow, unfortunately. Oh, you want to move? Okay, go. Go. Well, a little upset. 
that's all right. I don't care. No, I said that way. No, nope, you're going that way. And I'm going to cut you off. There we go. A little testing. That's good. She's testing me. Uh, anyhow, uh, you saw how she squared up to me, faced me, which is ideal. That's what you want. Uh, and the other one, I had her in here. And uh, in a video that I, I think I already had, yeah, one that's already been uploaded. Um, I couldn't get her to face up to me where the darn terrible. And uh, she knew how to, she just didn't do it. And I, I've never had that problem before either. Uh, they all do it just like this one just did just now. And uh, today I had her in here and we were doing exactly what we were doing with this one right now. And every time we stopped, uh, she turned into me perfectly, just like she's supposed to. And kind of like what she's doing there now. Not quite perfectly straight to me, but not bad. I'm pretty happy with this. Now, I'm going to explain the importance of what we're doing here. It might seem like I'm just chasing the horse around here in circles. No, it's more than that. We're actually doing something a lot more. And it's something that's very natural to horses. See, the hierarchy, keep going, dear, I didn't ask you to stop, thank you. Um, hierarchy in a herd, or in any wild horse situation, or any, any time there's more than one horse, the hierarchy is determined by who moves who. It's a very simple process that horses use to determine who moves who. And once I make her move, <clears throat> I'm higher than her. And I am therefore strong enough to be her leader. And a good leader makes a horse feel safe and secure. So they don't mind being with you. And that's why what you're seeing here, these really small circles she's doing around me, is because she feels safe here. She likes to be with me. My strength, because I made her move, and I'm higher than her, uh, that makes, makes, uh, makes her feel good. She likes that. This is where uh, I'm gonna talk about leadership. And a lot of people are gonna hate that because a lot of you don't want, you know, might even stop this video right now. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen because a lot of people just hate leadership because there are so many bad examples of it out there. And believe me, I've seen them, many of them. And if uh, my opinion of leadership was based on what I saw other people doing, I believe me, I wouldn't want nothing to do with it either. But it's very important because it's like I said, uh, horses like leadership. And a leader, there's a difference between being a bully and bossy and, thing and being a leader. Keep going, dear. I didn't ask you to stop. Um, if you're a good leader, the horse likes that. The horse gets solace. The horse feels peace and comfort and security. You're their protector, provider, all these good things. But whether or not you're its leader or, you know, the higher horse is determined by whether or not you move them. And that's why in the very early stages, the first, one of the first things you do is move the horse around, even if it's still on a lead or whatever. You move it here, you move it there, you back it up, you pull it ahead. And you're making the horse move. And that all determines your leadership. Every once in a while, she kind of hesitates a little, that's why you just see just a little flick of the finger. She thinks she'll stop, but she knows she's not supposed to, because I haven't asked her to yet. But you can see how she's really calmed down and gotten slower. Okay, now I'm gonna take a step back, and she's gonna, I'm gonna draw her into me. Oh, what, are you gonna make a liar out of me now? If you don't wanna turn in, you gotta get going again. And until you get the desired result. Uh, I don't know what that was about, but obviously if she gets excited, it's because she's not paying attention to me. Now, I'm gonna try this again. Take a step there, she turned in nice to me now. Now this is important. Now, if I get what I want, which is her turning in like that, I'm gonna leave her alone for a minute. 
I'm going to let her rest. Otherwise, I'm going to make her go faster. If she doesn't turn in, she's going to go the same direction again. If she doesn't stop properly, she only gets to stop if I tell her to stop and if she does it properly. If she doesn't do it properly, I'm going to send her off again. Now she's being a good girl. She stopped properly. She's paying attention to me, which is what we want. There we go. Very nice. But I'm becoming her leader by doing this. I know it, it doesn't seem like we're doing a whole lot, but it's really important because if you're not higher than the horse you're working with, it's not going to take orders. It's not going to listen to you and it's not going to trust you. You're going to have a nervous, worried horse that uh, might even just turn around and bite you or kick you if you try telling it to do something. If it does not view you as a higher horse, this stuff is super, super important. It's extremely important. And if you aren't firm enough with your horse, then you're in trouble. You might get hurt. So this is stuff that you got to get. You got to get this stuff. The leadership thing, I know a lot of you hate this stuff, but it's really important. You got to be higher than the horse. Just not the whole herd, just the one you're working with, okay? And you do that by making it move. And if you can consistently make it move, oh, you want to move? Okay, go. I didn't ask her to move, and she moved on her own. So I'm going to make her move, and I think I'm going to make her move faster. Now she's trotting. No. Oh. oh, now she wants to go the other way. <laughs> and she hits the brakes and goes the other way. There we go. That was her little attempt at, uh, I'm going to, you don't tell me what to do. But uh, she's going to very quickly learn. Now you notice uh, the circle's a little bigger now. And uh, she's going faster. Not a nice, calm, relaxed walk. And I'm not, I'm not encouraging this speed. Although if she does slow down, I am going to make her go again. No, I didn't ask you to stop. Well, now she's getting mad. Did a little toss and tiny tan from there. Just a tiny one. Okay, now I'm going to let her stop. Oh, you don't want to stop? Okay. I asked you and you didn't stop. So, I'll make her go again. Oh. She's really picking her up now. It's a little muddy in here, so you'll see her slipping and sliding a bit once in a while. Uh, I don't think she's going to hurt herself. Oh no, I asked you way back there. You keep going now. Now you can stop if you want. There we go. That's better. No, I didn't ask you to go anywhere. Thank you. Patience. You've got to have patience. You know, they don't always get it right away. And that's okay. She's just a baby. You know, this one's actually a month younger than the other one I've been working with. Uh, they're both getting very close to a year old now, but they're still just babies. So, you know, you can't expect too much from them. Yeah, good little girl. There we go. So, but I just wanted to <clears throat> show you, uh, you saw the last video, um, first couple times I asked her to move, she just threw a tantrum, blasting around here, bucking and kicking, and you know, you see how much she's calmed down now, because, and this is all because I made her move, that's it, I made her move, and by doing so, I became higher than her, so I am now trustworthy, she feels confidence and comfort in my in existence. She likes to be with me, and she doesn't hesitate to take orders from me. Because a lot of the stuff I ask her to do is stuff that uh, she already knows. You know, she just doesn't want to do it because you don't tell me what to do. That's her little attitude she's got. Hey, sweet horse, though. She's got a wee bit of an attitude, and uh, some people let her get away with it. I don't. I don't tolerate that stuff. If I ask her to do something, sorry, I don't care what your attitude is, you're going to do it and I'm not going to stop asking until you do it. You know, especially when it's stuff I know she knows how to do. You know, she knows how to move around here when I ask her to do. You, know, you saw several times already, all I had to do is point. I didn't use my flag, I didn't even cluck. You know, a couple times I have and a couple times I use the flag. But, you know, for the most part, she will move 
just worth a point. Are you going to go? Clock? No. Flag. <laughs> oh well. She, uh, was that a, that prob partly tells me uh, she just didn't want to leave me. You know, it's not that she doesn't know how or what, and uh, she's moving pretty slow, fairly calm, pretty nice. You gonna come in to me? You're not turning in. Okay, go. And you see, I didn't have to clock, didn't have to use a flag. All I had to do was point, and she knew what I meant. So she knows this stuff. It's just a matter of uh, whether or not she wants to listen to me. And uh, hopefully, if all goes well here, I'm going to, as long as I keep moving and facing her, uh, she's going to keep moving. But if I stop, take a step back, hopefully she should turn into me now. But she's not going to, so I'm going to keep her going. And now I'm going to ask her to go faster because she didn't stop when I asked her to. Good girl. And something you will notice that uh, I believe in being prepared. No, no, you go that way. <laughs> Oh, you silly little horse. No, I didn't ask you to come into me. Did you see that? She attempted to come in. That's how bad she wants to come in. But if, So if I back up now, she's going to stop right away, just like this. See, this is what I wanted in the first place. I wanted her to stop. She didn't want to, so she got to keep going, and then I picked up the pace a little because the walk wasn't enough to get her attention, so we asked for a trot. And now she's just standing here chilling because this is where she wants to be. She wants to be with me doing nothing because horses love doing nothing. Hey, sweetie. Hey, good girl. Oh, okay, go. Little, she's a little nervous. She wanted, she jumped and uh, started moving, so I, well, okay. I didn't ask her to go, but if she wants to go, she's going to go. Oh, keep going. I didn't ask you to slow down. Well, let's see if we can draw her back in. Yep. Oh, she's not stopping though. Okay. I don't even have to point. Just give her a double clock. Uh, very common, typical cues. Um, we're getting into gates now. And uh, very common cues. Single clock for walk, double clock for trot, and a kiss for canter. That's what most people teach, and that is what I use because that's what most people know. So, you're gonna turn in. Well, that wasn't as soon as I would like. I would like to have done that sooner. That's not very good, dear. Okay. We'll tolerate it for now. I see uh, her nose is running and she's dripping and slobbering and you can tell she's getting a little warm and that's okay. If we uh, make her work a little and she has to trot, maybe even do a little canter, well, that's, that's, that's up to her if she wants to do that. I'm not making her do it. But if uh, she moves off and I don't ask her to, well, I'm going to send her off and she's going to do more than just a walk because uh, the walk, on most horses won't get their attention. Sometimes it's all it takes, just a lap or two of a walk, and they'll be paying attention again, but quite often it doesn't work, and you're gonna have to do more than that. So that's why I recommend once you get up to this point, uh, a trot, and uh, that usually works, but if, depending on the breed of horse, certain horses have more endurance and a uh, trot ain't much. Uh, I got one. Oh, you want to go? Okay. Uh, I got one, one of my own horses, uh, part Arab. Therefore, she has lots of endurance and she can trot all day. She could care less. She could trot all day. No, keep going. You moved. What? So 
So in the case of that, if you, you, know, if you perhaps have an Arab, uh, you might actually have to canter the horse around because a trot even won't be enough. Most horses, a walk isn't enough, a trot will do the job. And uh, this one here, she's a quarter horse bred, so she doesn't have a great deal of endurance. Short bursts, she can really accomplish a lot. So uh, trot, if we do it long enough, that's plenty. We don't have to make her go any faster than that. And if she just stands still and behaves herself, well, we'll leave her alone. She doesn't have to move. But if she, no, oh, you want to go, do you? No, I didn't ask you to go that direction. You chose to move, so I'm going to make you go the other way. Now, that's just a matter of principle, because it proves I'm in control of the horse. You know, I'm calling the shots, not her. She wanted to go left, I'm going to say, sorry, you're going right. If you choose to move, un unauthorized, uh, unrequested forward motion, as Steve Young would say, uh, you do something unauthorized, well, then uh, I'm going to prove to you who's actually calling the shots around here, and you're going to go the opposite direction. Now, let's see if we can draw her in again. Not bad, not bad. That's pretty close to squaring up. Now, uh, I'm hoping she doesn't get too nervous when I walk up to her, though. She seems to think every time I get near her, I'm asking her to do something, which is not the case. There we go, sweetheart. And it's kind of windy today, too, so sometimes this flag does stuff, but I don't want it to. If I don't keep it down on the ground firmly, it uh, might do a little flapping. And uh, we don't want it doing that. And uh, even on the ground, sometimes it's doing stuff darn thing, wind. I, I think you should be used to that by now around here, all the wind we get. And uh, it's not that it's extremely windy, but where I live, it's in the prairies. Uh, it's fairly flat, and there are not a lot of trees. The ones that, All the trees you see behind me uh, are all planted. They've all been put by man. The, this used to be bald prairie. Uh, originally at one time. There was not a, well, there might have been one or two trees around here or there. There's a few trees I can spot that I'm pretty sure weren't planted because they're in weird places. But uh, for the most part, you know, it's flat and there's no trees. So there's nothing to stop the wind. So even a light breeze, it's pretty windy because you've got no shelter. You're out in the open. And uh, just from experience, I can tell, you know, being in the city, it's a whole lot calmer. So uh, it, it's not like it's extremely windy here, okay? But lately, last few years, it does seem like the wind's a little more prevalent than it used to be. I think those people's airplanes messing with our climate. Yeah. Anyhow, back to the horses. <laughs> Importance of making the horse move. Now, you'll notice how she's standing there like that, I'm, I don't have a lead on her. I'm not making her stand there. That's her choice to stand there. I want her to, but that's her choice to do it. And she's doing it because I made her move. Because every time she chose to move, I made her move even more. And I maybe didn't like the direction she was going, so I made her go a different direction. And that's how you accomplish things, is just by make sure the horse understands you're the one calling the shots. Just because it does something, don't go, oh, well, that's good. I wanted the horse to move that way eventually. Uh, now's just as good. No, now's not good. Because right now you want it to go that way, not that way. And if it decides to go that way, uh, maybe eventually you did want it to go that way. But right now you wanted it to go that way. So having the horse go that way, that was its idea, not yours. And if it's controlling its movement, not you, who's higher? Hey, remember, who moves who? That, that determines hierarchy and whether or not you're fit to be its leader. If you're strong enough to control the horse and call the shots, then you're strong enough to be trusted. And that means that the horse is going to be a lot calmer when it's around you. And uh, later on, when it comes to doing things that involve desensitizing, which we haven't gotten to a lot of lately, uh, I think I'm going to maybe do one specifically on that because even though if the things that we got, we've been doing a lot of desensitizing. Uh, but I haven't really put them all together. So I, I think it's something that maybe you should show you. 
and discuss a little bit. But anyhow, if the horse feels better when it's with you and calmer, trust you, when it comes to desensitizing, it's going to be way easier. So everything you do is going to be easier if you get this part. You know, it, it, it doesn't seem like we're doing much today, but what we're doing is huge, really big, very important and it determines whether or not you are going to be successful. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with being nice to your horse, but don't spoil it and don't let it call the shots. And uh, not long ago, I actually had to train a horse for someone that, well, it, it got out of hand and next thing you know, it's biting them and things like that because they're too nice to it. And uh, that horse never once ever tried biting me. And, uh, I actually discovered after spending a little time working with it, uh, he was much more sensitive than I thought. And by the time I was done working with him, I actually was starting to like that horse. But, uh, and I did ride him. Uh, and uh, the owner actually had ridden him too that day, uh, later on in that same day. And uh, they actually thought he was more responsive and better behaved than the one they'd been riding for the past year. So something to be said. Make sure you're calling the shots. Don't let the horse do it. Anyhow, uh, I think that's it for now, for well, camera stuff anyhow. Uh, we're not done with this one. We're going to do some more work with her and ask her to move a little bit and uh, do a few things. What a sweetheart. She's doing really good. I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, she's gone from brat to angel in seconds. She's doing very good and I suspect that now that She's respecting my calls and my cues. Uh, she's going to lead better now, too. Way better. Uh, she was a lot better when I led her here today. And I suspect uh, now, if we put the halter back on, lead her around a bit more, she's going to be even better yet. Because uh, we just gave her a little refresher that, uh, yeah, we're calling the shots around here, and you better pay attention. And that's kind of what it's about. And it kind of works that way with everything. So, uh, take your time, uh, enjoy your time with the horse, and uh, make sure you're the one in charge. Only one of you can be. And if you aren't strong enough to keep that horse safe, then the horse is going to start thinking, hey, I'm gonna, I need to do something to save my butt, and you're going to lose control altogether. I forgot to mention that it was actually pretty huge, too, and it's along the same lines. Uh, the last time we worked with this horse, uh, and we had her in here, after we took her out, uh, just that brief period of time that we spent establishing who's who in the zoo uh, sort of thing, she actually liked me so much that that big gelding that she so bonded to, well, anyhow, uh, we went over by the gate, I took the halter off, I opened the gate, and uh, she didn't go out. I had to tell her to leave. And she went out the gate calmly, rolled, got up, and stood there looking at me. Now, at that point, uh, again, a few hundred yards, meters, whatever, over there, all the rest of the horses were standing over there. She could see them, plain view. And I fully expected her to take off and to go be with them because the one in particular is the one that she really likes to be with. But what ended up happening was... Uh, because I'm done, I don't care what she does. That's, that's, that's her time, she can do what she wants. She's standing there looking at me, and I, okay, whatever. Uh, I started to walk away to go around the other side of the round pen to gather up my camera equipment, and she followed me. She actually wanted to be with me more than her leader, or the one that had previously been her leader up until that point. So, uh, and you can see now even, she keeps coming in. Uh, she's been doing this. Uh, what reminded me of it is when I walked away from her to go turn the camera off, when I thought it was done, uh, she started following me. And that's when I remembered what had happened the last time with her following me, instead of being with that big gelding that she really likes being with, which spoke volumes to me because that meant she actually preferred me over him, which meant uh, something really big happened here. That's why I thought I'd talk about it today because that's part of what happened. Is I became her leader, and she felt good enough being with me because I called the shots that she followed me. So, 
Anyhow, just uh, thought I'd throw that in there now before I forgot about it. And uh, yeah, now I'm going to turn the camera off after I say goodbye to you. Uh, have fun with your horse and have a good day and see you in the next one. Bye now.